Thanks for joining us for today's panel. I'm Chip Killingsworth, Director of Student Recruitment and Educational Outreach here at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And thank you for your interest at the Academy. Our panel today is specifically for those prospective students who are from countries other than the, than the United States. And our panelists today include our international student advisor as well as an international student from the Los Angeles campus and an international student from the New York campus. So I have a lineup of questions that I'm going to toss to each panelist. If you have any questions throughout the event, feel free to ask those through the Q&A feature. We will be able to answer those questions during the event through the Q&A Zoom feature. So first question here is for all of our panelists and we'll start with you, Aaron. Just tell us who you are and my favorite question to ask, what does the Academy mean to you? Hi, I'm Erin Dowling. I'm the International Admissions Advisor at our Los Angeles campus. And I, I really, the one word that always comes to mind when I, I think of the Academy is community. It's a supportive artist community. All right, thank you. And Sam, same question. Just tell us who you are and also where you're from and uh, which campus you're from, where you're from originally, and uh, what does the American Academy of Dramatic Arts mean to you? So I'm Sam Dolman. I'm from the UK, uh, a little tiny village called Hartley Whitney, which you, unless you're from the UK, you might know it. Um, I'm at the New York campus at the moment, which I love. Um, now the Academy to me, it's like, it's a place where I can go to free my mind. Uh, it's helped me find curiosity and creativity in places that I never really thought I would. And in the only seven months I've been here, I've created relationships and friendships with people that I know are like ones that won't be broken from now on. And not only that, it's just a place where I can enjoy my passion daily. And that's something you can not really, you can't ask for more, can you? Yeah, that's really important. Curiosity, creativity, passion, and relationships. Good. What about you, Dennis? Tell us who you are, where you're from, which campus you represent. I think uh, we can rule out that it's the New York campus. And um, <laughs> and uh, what does the Academy mean to you? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Dennis Mailu, and I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm a company a student. And um, the Academy... I always think of two words when I think of the academy. I think of home and I think of heritage. So home because it's embraced me. I've got a great community here of friends and colleagues that I'm with and I'm learning. And heritage because it's a renowned acting school and I can see the greatness that comes from it. So those are the two words that stick out to me. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Those are two important words, home, community. Um, as well as heritage. Uh, you know, a lot of people are drawn to the Academy because of our alumni and because of our history as the first school for actors in the English speaking world. And our community certainly is a community of artists, a di diverse community of, of students, aspiring actors from all over the world that share the passion for acting, as well as the understanding of the grit and the work that's involved to train as a professional actor. So Dennis, we're gonna keep the spotlight on you for this next question. And just tell, tell, tell our audience, why did you choose to attend the American Academy of Dramatic Arts? Uh, so I chose to attend the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, first of all, due to the depth of the curriculum. When I looked at it, when I was back at home uh, online, I saw that there were so many facets of acting that I didn't even know existed. And uh, the Academy was touching on all of that. Things like voice and speech, physical acting, um, script analysis, stage management. And uh, for, that really drew me to come and learn more because I never really knew how far you could go into learning about the craft. Um, and secondly, the alumni, that's great alumni. And that of course is inspirational because it just shows you how they come from humble beginnings to great endings. And I could see that for myself. So I was like, you know what? I'll dive right in. All right. I think, like I said, that's what it, that alumni list is what draws students in initially. And then they, re they realize how in depth the curriculum is when they get here. Um, so Sam, same question for you. What was your, why did, how, why did you choose to the attend, to attend the American Academy of Dramatic Arts? So many reasons. And I mean, Dennis just 
said it perfectly. They were all the words that I would come out of my mouth. But not only that, like I watched two of the company shows before I thought about coming and because they were on Zoom when I was auditioning. So I managed to see them and I saw great actors of people that had just been there at the end of their training. And I was thinking, oh, they're going to go off and do so many more things. Obviously, the alumni, you just there's you just can't get anything better of knowing people have succeeded from going somewhere. And you know that the teachers are strong. And then I did a little class as well with one of our New York teachers, Thomas Renee. And he like opened up my mind in ways that I never thought possible in literally like an hour and a half. And I had done four years previous training at another conservatory in England. And it was more dance, not very acting. Um, like, so when I came here and I saw that that was the stuff that I was gonna be learning, I was just like, I can't not go here. I didn't audition for anywhere else. I just auditioned for the Academy and went, if I don't get in, I don't get in. And if I do, then I'm going to be able to follow my dreams of training in America. So I continued and here I am today. It's, it's so nice to be able to get a preview of what the Academy offers through, you had mentioned the company shows. Uh, Dennis, actually, as you may have mentioned, is a third year company member and that's a professional ensemble of academy graduates uh, who are in productions throughout the year um, and uh, also um, the, uh, the, the, the teachers really getting that experience uh, from, uh, from experiencing the, the, what, what a class might be like. So we do have workshops and information sessions uh, on campus or open houses as well as touring events uh, all over the world and we're starting to pick up on our uh, on our travel for uh, going out and conducting workshops and auditions and information sessions in different countries so be sure and stay tuned to see if we're coming anywhere near you in the near future so the next question is for Aaron and can you just talk about your role as the international student admissions advisor Yes, so my role as the international advisor is to guide students through the application process, our enrollment process, your F1 visa application, all the way through to graduation and beyond. So I always tell students, once you start with me, you're stuck with me for several years. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, and I know our students appreciate your work and working with them. So next question is for Dennis. Dennis, what advice would you give international students interested in attending the American Academy of Dramatic Arts? Well, firstly, I'll say be bold, take the step and join, um, but also be ready to be a sponge and, and look, be available to soak up a lot of information on the craft. And uh, that comes with a lot of self-exploration. So a surprise part is also get ready to learn more about yourself. There's got to be a lot you're going to learn about yourself and you're going to grow as a person overall. All right. Yeah. It's one of our beloved faculty members, Susan Pilar says, how are you, you know, how are you going to play somebody else and bring another character to life if you don't know who you are? And that's great. Self-exploration, really important. Sam, same question for you, my friend. What advice would you give to students considering the American Academy of Dramatic Arts? So, my, mine's a word and then I'll explain the word. Mine's preparation. Mm -hmm. Preparation for me is key, always has been. And it's been something that I was drilled into as a kid. And it's preparation when it comes to getting all your vaccines, preparing for your first audition, preparing for your visa, especially because you need to have all the right stuff. You need to know what you're gonna be saying because there's gonna be a lot of questions. And then preparing for just the final days getting everything ready to move away for what could be two years of your life and then preparing for change because when you get here you're going to be put into a world that you've probably never been in before and you'll love it but it's hard work and it's it's like the industry you're you're going to be working every day and you're going to be expected to work in your time out of college as well but it's definitely going to be worth it if you mm. Preparing, yeah, setting the intention and then preparing accordingly. Love mm -hmm. it. Aaron, can you talk through the step-by-step -step admissions process as it pertains to international students and how, how can international students audition? Yes, the first step would be to begin your online application on our website. 
Once your application is in, we will start collecting your supporting documents, and that includes your academic records. If you have any questions about these, please do not hesitate to ask your admissions representative. You also will need to submit a personal reference. This can be from a teacher, a mentor, someone who can speak highly of your work ethic as an artist. And then we ask for a dramatic reference. So maybe that can be from somebody who's directed you in a play or who's seen you perform that can really talk about your abilities to complete the program here at the Academy. If you do not have a dramatic reference, we will accept two personal references. So do not hesitate to submit those as well. Once you have your application in, we will ask you what you would like to do with your audition. You have the opportunity to either schedule a virtual audition with one of our core faculty members. This will be a live audition where you'll get to engage with one of our faculty members. We strongly recommend this if you're able to schedule that with one of your representatives. If not, you can submit a video submission through YouTube or other platforms. You can send a video link and we will describe that whole process with you. So do not hesitate to ask any questions from your admissions team. I think that's so important. There is a plenty of uh, admissions professionals waiting to um, answer any questions that you have to help make the process go smoothly. Um, and the next question here is for uh, Dennis, we'll start with you. How did you prepare for your Academy audition? Speaking of preparation that Samuel had mentioned. I know Samuel uh, set it up very well there with the word preparation. And um, that was the first thing was to look and find what two monologues I loved the best. Um, one was classic, one was contemporary. And again, the word preparation came in. So I really had to dive into the text and get to learn it. But um, other than that, I would really advise you to choose pieces that you truly love and enjoy. Because at the, at the bottom line is when you perform them, you should be having fun. So remember to have fun while you do your audition because it's your chance to showcase your ability and showcase this passion that you have for acting. Yes. Sam, same question for you. So I did a online audition where I had to describe myself for a little bit and then do two monologues. Um, for the describe myself, I gave myself points um, that I wanted to hit about myself, but I didn't want to write it out personally because I wanted to kind of show myself as a talkative, charismatic um, and just like unique person. I'm quite out there sometimes and I wanted to show that by just kind of talking to them in a description way. And then my two monologues, I chose a funny and a very dramatic. So they were like opposites of each other. And what I did is I, for the week before, I kind of went over them every single day and just ran them and ran them and ran them. But then the day before and the day of, I didn't go over them because I didn't want to like fill my mind with negative thoughts. Oh, I've got that wrong in this rehearsal. I've got that wrong in this rehearsal, this. So I wanted to know that I had done my rehearsal. I knew everything was in there. And then I just calmed and did things that I knew I enjoyed before I recorded my audition, like have a cup of tea and just relax, maybe watch a film, watch my favorite film. And then when I went into it, I was calm and relaxed and I felt confident in what I was putting across. And that's kind of how I prepared for my, my audition. Mm. Great perspective from you both. Um, and I did want to mention, so the two monologues contrasting from published plays, two and a half minutes each, roughly. Um, contrasting can be two contemporary pieces, two contemporary plays, one dramatic, one comedic, or it could be one classical and one contemporary. Uh, whatever you feel most solidly represents your work. So uh, we give you that ability to choose. So Aaron, next question for you. You had mentioned the F1 visa. Could you talk a little bit more about that process? How do students apply for a visa, international students? Yes, so once a student's accepted into the academy, they can begin the F1 visa process, application process four months prior to their start date. So once you're accepted, you will actually receive an acceptance packet which will have an I-20 application in it. I will be here or your other admissions rep will be here to guide you through that entire application process. So you will not go through the you know, preparation of visa interview 
for the application process alone. We will take you through the steps to complete the I-20, and then we will give you an I-20 for your visa interview. All right. So Sam and Dennis, you are both very far away from home. Um, and I'm just curious to know, do you, do you ever get homesick? Have you gotten homesick? How do you cope from, from being so far away from family and, and what, what was, what's so familiar? And let's start with you, Sam. Okay. Um, so me personally, um, I don't struggle with homesickness that much, that often. Um, I have traveled a lot, but especially here as the academy, I don't, it might sound silly to say, but I don't find it that much of a school. It's more like a family, like from the people to the dorms, from the people who live outside the dorms to the faculty members inside, everyone just cares for each other. If you're having a down day, people see that and they'll come and help you out. If you're just feeling a bit lonely, people notice, they, they, they see it in you and they come and they'll reassure you and tell you that everything's okay. And then even on those odd days where I am feeling like I'm missing a bit of home, Again, I have a cup of tea, a couple of biscuits, and I'll phone my mum and just have a one-to-one. -one. And I try and do speak to family every other day. I do one day with my grandparents, one day with my mum. Because time difference, that's the only hard thing. But you work your way around it, and it will fit into your schedule somewhere down the line. So that's how I do it, personally. Great. Yeah, supportive environment. Dennis, I think your word was, one of your words was home for what does the academy mean to you? But Tell us uh, what what um, what do you do? You ever get homesick from? Uh, uh, sometimes I do get homesick because uh, I live off campus, so I actually live by myself. So at the end of the day, I come home and I have to be in this space by myself. So I do get a lot into my thoughts. However, we thank God for technology because due to technology, sometimes I just FaceTime my family. We speak all the time, all the way from Kenya. That's amazing, and. Um, just like Sam reiterated, it does, when you have a group of friends who give you positivity and you all have the same aspiration, you find that you're not alone. You are not alone. Everyone goes through the same thing you're going through. So when you're homesick, your friend probably is homesick too, but you find a home for each other and you push through in positivity and creativity at the academy. So it's nothing that would hinder you from moving forward in your career and actually learning about the craft. Thank you, Dennis. And, and uh, living off campus now. Um, and Sam, you live on campus, correct? Yeah. All right, great. So I, I did want to just mention, you know, the Academy does have housing available for both campuses in New York and Los Angeles. Most first year students live on campus. Um, but of course, students have the option of moving off campus as well, if that works better for them. So I did want to mention that too. Aaron, Let's see, uh, the next question for you, can a student apply to both campuses or must they choose one at the time of applying? At the time of applying, students will be asked to select their preferred campus, but that can change throughout your process. If there's any moment throughout the application or the enrollment process that you feel like one campus might be a better fit for you, you can always let your representative know and we'll make that switch. It's very easy. So there's nothing wrong with making that type of change. Thank you. And speaking of uh, campus options, Dennis, I'm curious to hear about your experience in Los Angeles. What surprised you most about coming to Los Angeles to study at the Academy? And what do you like most about studying in LA? Uh, so the most surprising thing about uh, joining the Academy in LA is that I found out that no matter the age, cultural difference, or um, the experience that people have when it comes to acting or even living life, you find that the Academy has a very good way of giving you a level playing field. So you get to learn from each other in different aspects of life. And it really feeds into the work when people have different experiences, different cultures, and different um, upbringings. Uh, and uh, I love LA, particularly because of the sunshine. I'm from Kenya, it's a warm country. <laughs> so again, it ties back to the question about homesickness. At least I have a piece of home with me every day. And uh, LA being the entertainment capital of the world, uh, 
it's very easy to manifest and see your future. So I'm a big person on manifestation and looking forward. So being able to live in Hollywood and seeing that on a day-to-day basis really gives me the mindset to see where my career is going and my future projection. All right, that's great. You had mentioned self-exploration earlier and then to add on that, uh, learning from one another and your classmates and people also in the community and learning from where you're at. I love that. Sam, same question for you, but for New York, what surprised you most about coming to New York to study at the Academy? And then what do you like most about it? Well, the thing that surprised me most about like New York itself is in England, there's this big stereotype that New Yorkers are just aggressive and angry. And they're not, they really aren't. uh, The first day I came here, I was welcomed warmly. And every day I go out and I'll end up having a conversation with random people and the amount of friends and connections I've made and like networking in places that I never thought I'd be able to network in just like random spas and and stuff like that and it's just such a crazy place as well like you'll go around one corner and see one thing and then you'll go around another corner and there'll be this other amazing thing and there's just so much to take in um and then what do I like most now straight up the food I, the amount of different foods there are in New York, I, I, I love it. I'm a big food in myself. And then just the culture and the different races and like, what better place to like cultivate your art than a place filled with so many different characteristics. And there's so many different characters you could make up and using these people that you see on your day-to-day life. And I just love it because everywhere you go, there is just this, there's just life everywhere and the city's really really is your classroom in, it, in a lot of ways isn't it um now yeah. you're making me want to have a slice of pizza thanks sam uh, yeah. <laughs> joe's, joe's pizza <laughs> all right uh and the next question is for aaron so the the very important and valid question from many international students do we offer financial aid what types of financial aid scholarships those types of things are available to international students and then our full tuition full ride scholarships available for international students yes we do allow students to apply for our needs-based scholarship through the financial aid department if they are accepted into the academy We also automatically review all of our students for our merit scholarship based off of their audition and their entire complete portfolio that they submit. We, our scholarships do not cover the entire cost of tuition. They can certainly help, but your advisor will be there to kind of go over some other ideas and options and ways to secure funding. It will be important to have that conversation with your family in advance. Even before you start the application process, I would take a look at our tuition and our living expenses so that you can really plan ahead with your family. All right. And as we talk about, I think it's important to mention, as we talk about uh, the, the process, application process, financial aid, auditioning, all of that, we are referring specifically to the full-time two-year conservatory program. For summer programs, the, uh, the process is, is different. There's no visa that's required for summer students um, who are enrolling into the academy. And uh, also there are, uh, the, the summer students are expected to pay the full cost of, of the summer programs. Um, but for the full-time uh, two-year conservatory program, financial aid and scholarships uh, are available to uh, international students who qualify. So, uh, Sam, what have you found helpful in managing your expenses as an international student? Um, So I worked before I came and I actually saved up a lot of money and I created a separate savings account in which I would deposit myself a large sum of money at the beginning of every month and then a smaller amount of money weekly. And I left that card with my mum at home. So that meant I could never use that card personally, which kind of helped me because it meant that I, even though it was my money, it was coming to me monthly and weekly. So I could then budget myself a little better. And it was like a, it was still like my job coming in um, when I was at home. And then not only that, luckily a few months in, I was provided a job through the academy as an usher. 
Um, so then that helped bring in some money as I was ushering the company shows and the academy are great with that, like helping you find a job. And once you're settled in first and making sure you can handle your workload before they give you another workload on top. And international students are permitted to work on campus up to 20 hours a week. That is the law, the U.S. government. Um, that So international students can apply for on-campus jobs, whether that be, be uh, ushering or working in production or admissions or the library, um, and the list goes on. So, uh, that, so working on campus may be a possibility for international students. Dennis. Uh, so you just finished the company, and uh, what are your plans? What are you What are you working on currently um, with the company, and then what are your plans uh, from here? Uh, next step. So uh, with the company, we just uh, finished all our plays and putting up all our productions, and now we're gearing ourselves to a company showcase where we present a monologue and a scene to uh, agents and managers and people in the industry. So it's geared to help us get representation. And I also recently got my uh, OPT visa approved, thanks to Erin as well. She helped in the process. And that's the visa that will allow me to work in the industry when I'm done in March. So I can, I'm fully fledged, going to be full-time worker in LA as an actor. So that's fantastic. All right, cause for celebration. Congratulations there, Dennis. And Aaron, can you talk a little bit more about the OPT process for international students? What is OPT and what do our international students tuning in tonight need to know about it? Yes, so OPT stands for Optional Practical Training. It's a 12 month program that you can apply for towards the end of your second year, or if you choose to do company, you can apply at the end of company. And it's a program that allows you to stay in the United States for another 12 months and pursue your career path. You can work only in your area of study, um, but there's a wide variety of options there for you. And we also help you through that entire application process and give you some ideas of next steps once you graduate. All right. So those, that's the last question that I had. Actually, there's one final question that I'm going that I'm going to ask in just a moment. But I did want to say that um, you know to to squeeze all of this in a short period of time um, and answer all of your questions um, may not be practical here and now. But we are certainly available, as I mentioned, through the Q and A chat. So feel free to ask questions through the Q and A. And also, as Aaron has mentioned, there is a team in financial aid and admissions to help this process go as smoothly as possible for you. So use the Academy community members as a resource. Um, and uh, we really do uh, encourage you to make sure there's no stone left unturned as you consider studying at the American Academy, coming to Los Angeles, coming to New York. Um, and uh, we are here to help you uh, do just that. So the final question is for all of our panelists. We'll start with you, uh, Aaron, and then we'll uh, go to, to Sam, and then last but not least, Dennis. And this question is kind of just a general question. So we have students tuning in from all over the world who are interested in coming to uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. What do you want to leave them with? What, what would you like, what words of wisdom, if you will, would you like to leave with our audience tonight? Aaron? Yes. Um, well, a few things. I, I always tell my students before they begin their audition, just breathe. We're here for you. The teachers are here for you. Our entire um, staff is here for you. We just really want you to do well. So just be prepared and breathe. We know this is a really daunting process, but there will be somebody to take you through every step of the way. Thank you. Sam? Yeah, like Erin said, everyone here wants you to succeed. Like you're always going to be on your path. And then sometimes it's it's going to be hard and it can be a struggle sometimes. And you can, you'll be able to make your way through it is what I'm going to be able to try to say. Like everyone here is here to help you. And no matter whether they're company second year or first year, you will make connections with all of them. The first day I came in, I made friends with two of the company members. The next day I was speaking to all the second years and 
every, like I said, it's just one big family and everyone wants you to do the best of your ability. So just be calm and take what's given to you and yeah, go with it, go with it. All right, and Dennis. Yes, um, just to reiterate what <clears throat> my fellow panelists have said, you know, um, there'll be someone to help you along the way. So just be brave, be bold, know this is what you were meant to do. And uh, it will not be a difficult process. You will see the beginning, middle and ending. And I'll leave you with uh, two words in Swahili, Karibu Nyumbani, welcome home. So oh, <laughs> I love that. I love that, welcome home. And all three of you had such meaningful things to say. Uh, Aaron, breathe. Start by taking a breath, brings you to the moment, which is all about what acting training is about, being present. And that happens through the breath. And, um, and Sam had mentioned the path. This is a path, one step at a time, one breath at a time, one step at a time. And, uh, and I love that you use the word bold. Dennis, be bold to take that next step. And say it again, Dennis, in Swahili. I, 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 what is it again? Karibu Nyumbani. Karibu Nyumbani. We will leave, and I apologize if I butch that up. We will leave on that note. Thank you so much, panel, and thank you, audience, for tuning in.